Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, just here today to talk to you about brands, um, specifically different airsoft brands and what I think of certain kinds of their, or different kinds of products that they make. Um, I get a, I get questions a lot of, oh, what do you think of this brand or what do you think of that brand? And generally, a good rule is that every brand has you know at least a couple things that I like about them. There, you know, obviously some companies that I like more of their products or less of their products. But um, for today, anyway, I figure you guys want to hear about the stuff that I don't like because it gets me in that ranty sort of mood and. You guys seem to enjoy it when I bitch and moan about things that I don't like. So we're going to start today about with uh, APS. Um, APS is a fairly big company now. They they do a lot of OEM work for different brands. Um, they do they build stuff for Javelin. Um, I believe Airsoft Megastore. Um, there's another there's another couple companies that. APS makes stuff for, but um, they used to be, if I remember correctly, in a paintball company actually. They actually made some different kinds of paintball guns, um, and they, within the last couple years or so, have broken into the airsoft industry. And there's some stuff they make that I like. There's one thing that they make that I actually like, and just about everything else I don't really care for. Um, so let's start with their AEGs. Uh, the AEGs that they make are M4s, AUGs, and AKs. I believe those are the three kinds of guns that they make AEG wise and quite frankly um, I don't have that much experience with the AUGs but the AKs and the M4s are pretty freaking terrible. Um, the M4s uh, used to be using this sort of crappy black um, pot metal box uh, just not super sturdy internals wiring was always really iffy the, the, I used to I actually bought a while ago I bought one of their um, uh, trigger wiring sets and the it was just terrible. Could not. It was molded incorrectly, so the way that it fit into the gearbox shell just never, never connected with the trigger and stuff like that. Um, I, I see the wiring on those die all the time. The external parts are you know sometimes decent, like the metal sometimes feels decent, but the quality control and finish on them is always kind of crappy. Um, parts fall off of it all the time. There's a there's a batch of APS M4s that I remember. Um, where the gearboxes were actually failure prone to the shell itself would actually snap in the first you know couple hundred rounds. Um, the craziest time that I saw one break was um, one of the one time the uh, the side of the gearbox uh, where you can open up the charging handle on the side of the gearbox that you can see through the through the um, through the ejection port exploded out the side um, as it was being fired. So. Yeah, in general, I mean, they've since fixed that specific problem. They have their new hybrid gearbox, which is their um, their gearbox that tries to incorporate a lot of different kinds of features. Um, the quick change spring guide is kind of neat, and their blowback system is a blowback system, so that's kind of nice, I guess. Um, but in general, they're not that reliable. I the trigger response is just sort of eh. Um, for the price, there's so much, so many better options that'll actually work on you. Um, yeah, just in general, really don't like any of their, any of their guns. Although to give them credit, they do try and do somewhat innovative things. Like they have a key mod rail system coming out, which isn't necessarily innovative, but they try and attach onto trends that are happening, which is kind of cool, I guess. Uh, quick change spring guide to name one. Oh, forgot one other item that they make is the UAR, which is admittedly one of their better products if I had to recommend just one of their AEGs would probably be that one but the problem that I have with that gun is that they the first batch they had the battery running along the top of the gun um, so you had to use this really weird stick type battery a lot of times you had to go with like a, a small 7.4 lipo and then they inexplicably just changed the the uh, wiring to the back so now that it's in the stock or the butt pad area of the gun um, you're really the only option you have for to fit a battery and there's a is a 7.4 small lipo um, so that's kind of a pain because again they have a tendency to change things without telling anybody they just it just sort of happens and then everyone else has to sort of figure out their way around it um, so that's their those are their electric guns um, their AKs are equally as failure prone um, you usually have a problem oh another thing is that their, their blowback system on their electric guns um, it's a mechanically tied system the piston actually pulls back a um, the plate that um, that replicates the blowback. Um, same thing for the AKs. Uh, and the problem with that is that it adds a lot more stress to the internals of the gun. It, it, it puts on a lot more load for the gun to try and spin. So it causes um, some issues if you, you know, if you, if you get a gun lockup, a lot of times it won't have enough torque to, the motor won't have enough torque to turn over the gears. So then you gotta go in and you gotta unlock the gearbox with like a, a 
uh, dental pick or something like that to get anterior versatile spin back and stuff. So, you know, in general, really don't like their their electric guns. Um, they do have a new Silver Edge gearbox, which they're claiming because they polish a bunch of stuff on it, lowers the uh, the power draw by like 0.8 of an amp, which is like, ooh, big deal. Uh, <laughs> big freaking deal like it it doesn't it doesn't really matter a whole lot especially when as it is they can't get their guns working correctly anyway so yeah do not recommend that they they do have a gas blowback pistol it's called the APS ACP and it is a version of a Tokimori Glock it's based off of that sort of gas system um also kind of terrible will only run on CO2 um a lot of the parts on the inside are made of that clear polycarb which i know is impact vulnerable it it has a tendency to crack although i haven't seen that problem too much as far as actual cracking on that but i know that the aps acps are kind of crap the the trigger and hammer don't work all the time it doesn't always give you a full stroke on the shot um the magazine has kind of got an interesting design where the the co2 is punctured from the bottom instead of the top of the magazine that's supposed to fill up the gas chamber in the magazine a little bit better but again reliability is just not there um so yeah don't recommend their their gas blowback pistol uh their sniper rifles they do have a couple sniper rifles they have their aps uh m40 and their m50 i think it's called they're both based off the m40 sort of designer rifle um the a spring powered m40 is based off of a tokimori vsr 10 design with the magazine in the correct place so the bb actually grabs the or the the there's a little follower that grabs the bb and pulls it all the way up to the hop-up chamber of the TM uh, VSR-10 design, which is kind of cool, I guess. Um, stock, they're outfitted with 90-degree sears and a 90-degree piston with a, um, what do you call it, adjustable trigger on it, which is, again, kind of cool. Um, that's about it, really. Uh, I do occasionally see those breaking down, too. Um, for the price, you could get, you know, a cheap Chinese VSR-10 and just upgrade that, with, you know, and get better results. Um... They also do have their shell ejecting sniper rifle, the APS M50. And granted, you know, I haven't seen a lot of problems with their gas and shell designs. Like the, the CO2 charge is kind of cool and it, it does seem to work all right. And you can push some pretty high FPSs out of it. Um, that's the one thing out of all their guns, at least, that I haven't seen a huge issue with is their gas and shell stuff. And that brings me to their shotgun. They have that new APS M870, which I've gotten the chance to shoot and use. Seems fairly reliable. Um, you know, the... The price is kind of outrageous. I could get, you know, a real, a one and a half real 870s for that price for like 500 bucks, I think is the price. Um, and whether or not it's going to be that APS is going to be AP, ATF approved to actually get in the country, I don't know. But the shell ejecting is kind of cool. Um, again, just their track record with the other stuff is just not great. So I, other than a sort of a gimmick, because really I can't use it for actual airsofting, I don't really recommend it. Um, their one product that I do like that I believe that they actually make decently well is the Thunder Bees and those are probably their most you know their bread and butter their most famous product because and when I say tell this other people on the reason that it's so successful and the way reason that it's so good is that it explodes and APS can make a product that explodes no problem um that's not an issue for them but no all kidding aside the the Thunder Bees seem to work well for the most part sometimes you get problems with the the firing pin not you know striking the um the CO2 canister in the right way, but you know, for the price that you pay is sort of a disposable item. Um, it makes a really nice loud bang and they're really fun to play around with. They're pretty safe. I haven't really heard of anyone getting hurt by those. It's a non pyro sort of thing. I mean, again, with the exception of, I have heard some people like getting them caught next to their ear and that loud bang of like bursted eardrums. But you know, again, with any sort of loud item, you know, that's a risk. So I don't see that as a real big issue. Um, because it, it sort of does the, does what you expect it to do, and the you know, disposable shells work great. You know they're not too terrible to replace if it does break. So that's their only product that I like from them. But otherwise, yeah, APS is a company I just do not really care for. None of their products have really won me over. I've not seen the reliability from them. Um, they constantly pump out new products, and they're always trying something different, which is kind of cool. But really, they, they they take no effort in making their existing products any better than you know, they already are, which is quite honestly pretty freaking terrible. So yeah, just let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm sure somebody out there might have an APS gun that's working for them, and they're going to be in the comments like, oh yeah, you know, I've had an APS gun for like a million years, and it's never had a problem. Well, good for you, but I've I've seen way too many of those break, and they're off spec on the inside, so when they do break, have fun trying to replace and fix certain things, because it's going to suck for you. 
anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, also, like, add me on Facebook. I do have a Facebook page. Uh, I'm going to try pump out videos a little bit more regularly for you guys. But, yeah, just have a great day, guys.